Hanukkah and Christmas are known worldwide as the Festival of Lights. But when my guest speaks, as many as 400 people see brilliant lights that come flying across the heavens into the room. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, John Paul Jackson, is such a fitting guest, and let me tell you why. This is the Christmas Hanukkah season, and Hanukkah is known as the Festival of Lights. You have the Hanukkah menorah, and uh, Christmas, you think of light shows and displays, but you have never seen a light show like John Paul Jackson saw. It literally is a spectacular of all spectaculars because the lights were caused by God, produced by God. 400 people at this meeting and just about all outside of a half a dozen saw the most magnificent light show, which were, I believe, just angels in the spirit realm just moving and slowing down just enough so you could see these lights all over. And someone might say, well, but it could have been uh, a magic trick. It could have been just strobe lights or something like that, except a half a dozen people walked over to John Paul Jackson after the meeting and they said, we didn't see any lights. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, John Paul, last time I had you on the show, you had an end time revelation. And I'm reminded of the angel coming to your mother. Right. What did this angel tell your mother? That she was going to become pregnant after having a miscarriage and that she was going to have a son, that he would have an 11th hour ministry, and that even her pregnancy would be a sign of that 11th hour ministry. And what does 11th hour ministry mean to you? An end time ministry, a ministry that says the Messiah is coming and uh, prepare yourselves. He had a 10 year window. What's going to happen over the next 10 years? And some of the things have already started, uh, such as uh, it, it had to do with weather, with politics, mm -hmm. with wars, with the economy, right. uh, in, in weather. What's happened? Well, take a look at the geophysical issues. There's been three major earthquakes in the world just just recently, and what we find out is that you have Haiti, you have Chile, you have uh, New Zealand. The the plate shifted, uh, and one of the things the Lord told me was that the, the physical plates on the Earth would shift, and that would actually end up causing a wobble, a slight wobble in the rotation of the Earth, and so the the plate in Chile shifted three feet. That's unheard of that a, a, a huge plate would shift that far, but the plate in New Zealand, it said, shifted 11 feet. Mm. That's a major shift that will, that will cause a wobble to some degree in the earth, and that causes other earthquakes to take place. And, and you also said there would be very unusual weather patterns. Yeah, very unusual weather patterns. Jet streams would shift, and there'd be unusual weather patterns so that we would see record, rec everything would be in a record. So you have the record rain, you have record storms, you have record heat, you have record cold. So we have California who uh, suffered the, uh, went through the coldest summer in their history. You have Moscow who went through the hottest summer in their history. And so you're having extremes everywhere on earth. You're having extremes. You're having uh, Pakistan having uh, over six weeks of flooding from rains that won't seem to leave their area. Now, a couple of things I want, I've got to ask John Paul. Israel, uh, Iran is just, it's, it's posturing itself. Uh, there, I mean, uh, some of the terrorist organizations have got more rockets and missiles and bombs uh, than a small nation mm -hmm. right, right in and adjacent to Israel. What's going to happen there? Is God showing you? Yes. Well, Israel and Iran are going to have a conflict. There will be explosions that take place uh, in Iran and also in Israel to some degree, but Iran will be hit. It's going to be hit by Israel. I'm not sure if anybody's going to join with them, but I do know that, it's, that Israel is going to be a proponent of that. I know that from, from that, Israel will not be expected to survive it, but they will. 
and it's going to be miraculous. Again, God is going to show his hand of protection and his hand of provision for this incredible nation that he has chosen to, to speak messages into his kingdom and to advance his kingdom. And that's, they're going to return. People are going to return. And if you're watching, there are so many people. My great grandfather was, was Jewish and my grandfather was Jewish and, and they came to know the Messiah. And I know that what happens when that takes place, lives change, thought processes change, supernatural events begin to occur again. And they're going to see supernatural events occur. Uh, John Paul, it's my belief that there's going to be a huge revival among Jewish people. Yes, there is. And then we Jewish believers are going to infect the congregation, the church, and they're, we're going to provo- they're supposed to, the Gentiles to provoke the Jew to jealousy. These Jewish believers will be like Paul the Apostle, uh, like a forerunner of the 144,000. And they're go- it says the word of the Lord will go from Zion. I believe that's about ready, ready to happen. I believe that. Uh, and I believe all the tenseness that's going on will do nothing but cause Jewish people to cry out, God, if Jesus is the Messiah, please show me. What did God show you about the economy of the United States? Well, the economy of the United States is going to get weaker. Next, in fact, in 2011, you're going to see uh, an end of this, what I call a bubble. And the, it's got to stop somewhere. Things will get worse in 2011. Uh, as the year progresses, things are going to get dramatically worse. The reason I have him on the show is that most of the prophecies that God has shown him have not come to pass. They're going to happen over the next 10 years. I'm convinced of this, and that's why I've had him on the show. But he recently had a visitation from the Lord that showed him a key to, that no matter what happens to the economy, no matter what bombs go off, no matter what happens to weather, no matter what happens with disease, no matter what happens in the political arena, we that know the Lord will be okay. Tell me about this visitation. Well, this issue of justice, the Lord began to talk to me about justice, and he actually came into my office early in the morning. I was there before, before the sun even came up, and I was writing about his names, and I had to put on my heart, a burden on my heart, the names of God, all the ways that he provides for us, because his glory and his acts and his names are inseparable. He's not a God who is a God of peace, but he doesn't bring peace. He is a God, Jehovah Shalom, he does bring peace, and he is peace. When he comes, peace comes. All of his names are that way. And the thing, when I came to, to Jehovah Mishpat, the God of justice, I felt a hand on my back, and it's almost like I could feel the fingerprints. And the Spirit of the Lord was there so strong, I didn't even want to turn around to see who was there. I actually thought it was one of my staff who'd snuck into the office and was laying his hands on me to, to pray for me, and I just was mm. going to let him keep praying for me. It was that real. I understand that. Many times I'll feel something touch my head, and it's an mm. angel. Uh, but this was the Lord. This was the Lord. So I believe it was the why, Lord. Why does he want you to teach his understanding and his by revelation right. of justice at this moment in history? Because over 500 times he talks about it in Scripture. The prophets were to cry out for it. The priests were to ensure its applications. The king were to implement the process of justice throughout the entire kingdom. And Isaiah 59 is happening right now. So, and that is, no one is crying out for justice, verse 4. No one is crying out for righteousness. Justice lies buried in the streets, dormant in the streets. Well, listen, we don't want it buried in your life anymore. You've had some injustices, injustices involving money, injustices involving Involving health, injustices involving wives or, or husbands, injustices involving children, injustices involving employers, even going back several generations, and no one's crying out for justice because they don't know they can do it. But when you learn how to do this, your injustices are going to get settlements. And right. I'll take a settlement from God any day. Be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! In 2009, proven prophet John Paul Jackson predicted the coming of a devastating perfect storm that would usher in unprecedented calamity through the elements of war, politics, economics, religion, and geophysical upheavals for America and the world. Much of this prophecy has come to pass, yet more is on the way. But you don't have to be a victim. John Paul Jackson has been given the keys on how to survive and even prosper in the midst of this coming tsunami of prophetic judgment warnings. Call now and receive John Paul Jackson's significant end-time teaching 
keep receiving God's justice and his bonus teaching Naturally Supernatural on one DVD and two audio CDs. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9084. Through this end time teaching, Receiving God's Justice, you will understand that God wants to supply you compensation and restitution for every injustice perpetrated against you. Learn the keys to reclaim that which has been stolen from you, your family, and from your ancestors. Receive your long-awaited physical, emotional, or mental healing, restored relationships with your spouse and children, deliverance from addictions, financial prosperity, and so much more. Also receive John Paul's bonus CD teaching, Naturally Supernatural, which includes an impartation for you to operate in the supernatural of God. Actually hear the reaction of over 400 people as they witnessed heavenly lights flying around the auditorium. Don't miss out on getting what John Paul Jackson calls his most significant end time teaching, receiving God's justice, and his bonus teaching, Naturally Supernatural, on one DVD and two audio CDs. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9084. Call now. Write to the address on your screen or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with John Paul Jackson, and I am so excited. The Lord Himself came to John Paul Jackson and said that there will be a 10-year window of horrific things that are going to happen on the earth, but that doesn't mean they have to happen to us. And there is a key and it has to do with justice. Over 500 times in the scriptures, justice is mentioned. And there's a scripture, uh, was it Jeremiah, no one calls out for justice? Well, Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, no one's Isaiah calling 59. out for justice. Right. And tell me, I explain um, what injustices could be going on in people's lives and explain how justice will change it. Right. Well, there's two things that happen. That people can invite uh, in the enemy into the life because they do wrong and sinful things. They, but, but there's an issue where you've done nothing wrong and yet something happens to you. And that's where the enemy intrudes into your life. He steals life from you. He steals finances from you. He steals your emotions. He steals marriages. He steals relationships. He's, and, and it can happen for generations. So you cry, crying out for justice is the, the act of asking God to uphold his throne. Isaiah, t I mean, Psalms tells us that the foundations of the throne of God are built on two things, righteousness and justice. Mm -hmm. If either one of those aren't implemented, then the, tr the throne topples. That is not going to happen. So therefore, we are, we are able to cry out to God for justice. And it's not, justice is, a, is, is two faceted. So you have a, let's say you have a one ton attack on your life and you cry out to God, you'd expect a one-ton anointing or a one-ton repayment to come back to you. One ton stolen or $5 stolen, $5 back. One ton stolen, one ton, one ton back. That would be fair. That would be, that would be fair, but it doesn't take care of your pain, doesn't take care of your suffering, doesn't take, take care of the emotional duress, doesn't take care of the loss of, of life that you had prior to the, to the settlement. So what God does, and it's covered in the scripture of what the palmer worm has eaten, no canker worm has eaten, I will repay seven times, or they will restore seven times what they ate or they stole, is the settlement in addition to the justice given. So there's part of justice is not just for one thing for one thing. There is additional uh, implementation that God gives in our lives. And so we have, uh, for example, a lady in Ohio was calling out unto God for uh, issues that had gone on in her marriage, issues that had gone on in her family, and she had an autistic son. She's asking for justice to come and not, not knowing how it's going to come because sometimes we don't know. It's not like you get a dollar for a dollar. It, justice comes in many different ways that God chooses. In this particular case, so it's up case, to the judge. It's up to the as judge. To what the settlement? Is. Exactly. I he, got it. He, does, he, he determines the settlement. But you cry out for justice. He gives you justice. In this particular case, not only was there real, real estate issues that were solved in her family, but her autistic son, over over a short period of time, was healed of autism that that he had, to where that he was able to communicate and and wasn't just like like barely healed. He was totally healed of this autism that he had. Justice in her case meant the healing of 
of her son as well. Well, many times, and you, you've alluded to this, it, generationally there's been injustice, and mm -hmm. many people call it curses, and they are curses, but from generate, there's an alcoholic in each family, just mm -hmm. passes on and on. These right. are injustices. Do you have an example of someone that has taken your teaching and uh, got a settlement for all these injustices happening to them? Sure. I mean, there's, there's many different ones. The, the issue of if curses are passed down to the third and fourth generation, blessings are also passed down to the third and fourth generation. So when, when the enemy steals from, say, your great-great-grandfather, mm -hmm. then let's just say he stole a million dollars. The lifestyle of the family is affected by the loss of those finances for the next, for several generations to come. So what happens is justice is waiting for somebody to cry out for it, and it'll wait for three and four generations. It sounds too simple, John Paul. Well, sometimes we try to make God complicated, and God <laughs> wants it to be very simple. He wants us to cry out, and that's why it says no one cries out for justice. We have to cry out for it. So uh, there's another individual who had issues of real estate. Their, their great-grandfather lost real estate, and years and years had passed, and they had not been able to own a home. The grandfather had not been able to own a home. The father had not been able to own a home. They had not been able to own a home. They began God, I, I've seen this poverty passes on from Poverty passes. That's an right. injustice. It's an injustice, exactly. We cry out for justice, and so God gives us ideas, God gives us understanding, and what ends up happening within a few weeks of crying out for justice, they were able to buy their first house, and after that, they had another piece of property, that a commercial piece of property that they had not been able to close on, trying to sell, hadn't been able to sell it, that also sold, and justice began to happen to them. Their financial structure dramatically changed because they cried out for justice. Okay, in your world, with this 10-year window of, I would call them judgments mm -hmm. in all of these different areas. By the way, you told me some God showed you about gold. Tell yes, me that. that gold was going to dramatically increase in price. You know, there was another thing price. you told me about it. not all gold is not all gold is gold, right? He and what me, did that mean to you? Gold. It meant that there are there's there is gold in the U.S. Treasury that is not gold. It has a gold covering, but underneath it, it is not gold. So you're telling me that as broke as the U.S. is, we're even broker? Apparently, <laughs> we are even broker. Okay, <laughs> why is it so important at this moment, with this 10-year window of all these judgments that are coming on America, why is it so important why are you so passionate to teach this? Because when justice comes, it can, it'll come in the most opportune time that the judge knows how to deliver it. And you'll have ideas that you never had before. You'll have innovations you never had before. You'll have ways of avoiding issues that you never even thought of before. You will have provision that you've never even dreamt of before. These type of things, God wants to put a whole new mindset into you. And part of that is the issue of justice. God wants to give justice and our, a, a change the way we think. Poverty mentality is exactly that. It's a mentality, and justice will break that mentality, and, and you'll find ideas coming to you that will work. Well, you, you know what I think is so wonderful is when God shows up, whether he shows up in the arenas you're talking about or John Paul Jackson was in England. 400 people sitting in an auditorium and th this, this is Hanukkah, Christmas time, the festival of lights. You don't know what lights are till God's lights show up. After all, the Messiah said, I am the light of this world. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to reach the Jewish people with his love. Messiah Jesus has torn down the wall dividing Jew and Gentile. The two together form one new man to reach the world. God's method to reach the Jewish people is through signs and wonders. This is why our website, SidRoth.org, is jam-packed with tools to equip you to move in signs and wonders, understand Israel, and the Jewish roots of the church. Log on to SidRoth.org today. We now return to It's Supernatural!
Hello, Sid Roth here with John Paul Jackson. And I wish I had been there, John Paul. 1997, Southampton, England, 400 people. And you're speaking on my favorite subject, naturally supernatural. And by the way, I heard that teaching. That was fabulous teaching. Thank but you. someone must have been impressed besides the audience because someone else showed up. Tell me what happened. Well, as I was talking about being naturally supernatural and living a lifestyle that allows that to happen in your life, it's not, it's not reserved for just prophetic people or apostolic people or, or anything like that. It's reserved for everybody. You that are watching right now can live a naturally supernatural life having God intervene on your behalf. And I was talking about how to do that. One of the things I was talking about was lights and how the, God is light. God is he is the father of lights. So, and we find out that in that process, I mean, the children of Israel were led by this huge flaming fire that led them through the wilderness. And so he proved his light nature there. Well, while I'm talking about all of this, these lights enter into the room. I don't see them at first. They're behind me. And the, the people see them and they begin to point and they begin to, the, the noise, as you will hear, begins to grow louder and louder. I heard, I heard the audio CD of this and it is amazing. I mean, the whole, it, it, it was like a hum. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, you must have been watching that. And, and I, well, I watched could it you, over could, my head. Were you wondering what was happening? At what first, <laughs> I was at first. I thought, what is going on here? And then I saw them as they kind of, it was like a, um, they just moved through the air over me. And then they began to swirl. The more I talked about the Lord, the more they began to swirl and go from side to side through the auditorium. People were watching. People were up in the balcony. They came down from the balcony. People fell out of their chairs or slid out of their chairs. But, but, but wait a second. How do you know that wasn't just psychosomatic and someone had these laser lights and it was one of these shows? How do you know it wasn't? Because God in his great wisdom allowed allowed a handful of people, about six, six or eight people, to not see anything. And they came up to me afterwards and said, we didn't see any lights. What was, what was going on here? You were talking about lights, but we didn't see any. And so I said, God bless you. You were, you proved. God will make this up to you because you proved this was not man-made. This was God-made. This wasn't strobe lights. This wasn't laser lights. This was God doing something, and he will make this up to you because, again, he's a God of justice. You never miss out on one thing without God giving you something greater. And so the, the people were, were looking at these lights. I was, there was, Sid, there was yellow ones and blue ones and red ones. There was multicolored ones. There was one bar that was like... like 20 some feet wide, maybe six inches, four to six inches thick, that moved across the whole the whole auditorium that everybody saw as lights were, were racing around. And the more I talked about the Lord and who he was, the faster they began to move. Uh, the next morning, you had an even larger meeting at that same conference. Did the lights show up? They did. They showed up again the next morning. Now, what are these lights? Uh, they're either angels or heavenly hosts. I, you know, I kind of hesitate to define them because what I don't know, I, ha I, I hate to define, but I know this. They were from heaven. They were excited by the, power, by the move of God and power was there with Describe them. Describe to me what was happening to people as a oh. result of these, I'll call them what, I believe they were angels, as a result of these angels showing up. Right. What was happening? People were, people were weeping, people were crying, people were, I saw husbands and wives hugging each other. There was an incredible love and a holy hush that hit, hit. And, and, but there, I say a holy hush on one hand, and yet on the other hand, there was this incredible noise as people saw them moving, and you, you'll hear it on, on the CD. It's, it's, I mean, it, I, people tell me, you need to put a disclaimer, do not play this while driving your car, because <laughs> the anointing of the Lord is really there. Okay. The presence have, of the Lord. We have to change the subject for a minute. I want to find out about that experience you had at God's throne. Well, <laughs> this was in 95, I believe. It was. And there's a May, May, May 12, 1995. I am I'm, I'm praying and I hear a harp. And this harp, next thing I know, I'm standing in this incredible light that's encased me. And I've, I've realized I've been in some of the light before, but not totally surrounded by it. And now all of a sudden, I'm surrounded by it. I'm breathing it. And as I'm breathing it, it's living, Sid. It enters into me, and every cell of my body comes alive. And I, I literally felt like I was taken apart at the cellular level and put back together again. 
as, I, as I'm standing there. But I did, I'm turning, trying to find out where I am. And I turn, and as I turn, I, I come face to face with whatever part of the Lord he wanted me to see. I'm not saying I saw all of him, but I saw the throne, and I saw him sitting on the throne. I did not see his face, but there was, because incredible light was coming from him, I was like eight feet away. And my first, my first instinct was not like, hey, God, how you doing? I didn't think about giving God a high five. I was fill, filled with the terror of the Lord. I no, was no, filled with the terror. He gave you, remember, his mother, an angel visited, that he would have 11th hour ministry, which means he'd be alive at the wrap-up, and he'd be, have a prophetic influence. Uh, and in order to have this influence, you have to move in an awesome power. But the Lord told you something about the power he wants you to move in. What did he tell you? He did. Well, I, I was kind of complaining because I wasn't <laughs> operating in enough power. And he, and he came to me, and he, he actually didn't come. He said He spoke to me, what I perceived to be an audible voice, and he said, son, I long to give gifts to men more than men long for those gifts themselves. But I love you too much to give you a gift I would later have to judge you for because you're not ready for the adulation that would come with that level of gifting. He said, but if you do keep on this same track that you're on right now, one day I will be able to grant your request. And I believe that, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, we think about gifts. How would you like gifts from God? If you will work on repenting and getting your character to reflect the character of the Messiah, he will entrust you with the greatest Hanukkah Christmas gifts you have ever had. The greatest gift is the light of the world, Yeshua, Jesus, the King of the Jews. He's the greatest. In 2009, proven prophet John Paul Jackson predicted the coming of a devastating perfect storm that would usher in unprecedented calamity through the elements of war, politics, economics, religion, and geophysical upheavals for America and the world. Much of this prophecy has come to pass, yet more is on the way. But you don't have to be a victim. John Paul Jackson has been given the keys on how to survive and even prosper in the midst of this coming tsunami of prophetic judgment warnings. Call now and receive John Paul Jackson's significant end-time teaching receiving God's justice and his bonus teaching naturally supernatural on one DVD and two audio CDs. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9084. Through this end time teaching receiving God's justice, you will understand that God wants to supply you compensation and restitution for every injustice perpetrated against you. Learn the keys to reclaim that which has been stolen from you, your family, and from your ancestors. Receive your long-awaited physical, emotional, or mental healing restored relationships with your spouse and children, deliverance from addictions, financial prosperity, and so much more. Also receive John Paul's bonus CD teaching, Naturally Supernatural, which includes an impartation for you to operate in the supernatural of God. Actually hear the reaction of over 400 people as they witnessed heavenly lights flying around the auditorium. Don't miss out on getting what John Paul Jackson calls his most significant end time teaching, receiving God's justice, and his bonus teaching, Naturally Supernatural, on one DVD and two audio. Audio CDs. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9084. Call now. Write to the address on your screen or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, my guest went from an income below the national poverty level to being in the top 1% of wealthiest people in the world. He discovered ancient secrets on how to prosper in tough economic times. Hanukkah and Christmas are known worldwide as the Festival of Lights. But when my guest speaks, as many as four hundred people see brilliant lights that come flying across the heavens into the room. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Can ancient secrets of the supernatural be rediscovered? Do angels exist? Is there life after death? Are healing miracles real? 
Can you get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 30 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, John Paul Jackson, is such a fitting guest, and let me tell you why. This is the Christmas Hanukkah season, and Hanukkah is known as the Festival of Lights. You have the Hanukkah menorah, and uh, Christmas, you think of light shows and displays, but you have never seen a light show like John Paul Jackson saw. It literally is a spectacular of all spectaculars because the lights were caused by God, produced by God. 400 people at this meeting and just about all outside of a half a dozen saw the most magnificent light show, which were, I believe, just angels in the spirit realm, just moving and slowing down just enough so you could see these lights all over. And someone might say, well, but it could have been uh, a magic trick. It could have been just strobe lights or something like that. Except On Earth, you're having extremes. You're having uh, Pakistan having uh, over six weeks of flooding from rains that won't seem to leave their area. Now, a couple of things I want, I've got to ask John Paul, Israel. Uh, Iran is just it's, it's posturing itself. Uh, I mean, uh, s some of the terrorist organizations have got more rockets and missiles and bombs uh, than a small nation mm -hmm. right, right in and adjacent to Israel. What's going to happen there? Is God showing you? Yes. Well, Israel and Iran are going to have a conflict. There will be explosions that take place. Uh, in Iran and also in Israel to some degree, but Iran will be hit. It's going to be hit by Israel. I'm not sure if anybody's going to join with them, but I do know that, it's, that Israel is going to be a proponent of that. I know that from, from that, Israel will not be expected to survive it, but they will. And it's going to be miraculous. Again, God is going to show his hand of protection and his hand of provision. Just recently, and what we find out is that you have Haiti, you have Chile, you have uh, New Zealand. The, the plate shifted. Uh, and one of the things the Lord told me was that the, the physical plates on the earth would shift. And that would actually end up causing a wobble, a slight wobble in the rotation of the earth. And so the, the plate in Chile shifted three feet. That's unheard of that a, a, a huge plate would shift that far. But the plate in New Zealand, it said, shifted 11 feet. Mm. That's a major shift that will, that will cause a wobble to some degree in the earth. And that causes other earthquakes to take place. And, and you also said there would be very unusual weather patterns. Yeah, very unusual weather patterns. Jet streams would shift and there'd be unusual weather patterns so that we would see record, rec everything would be in the record. So you have the record rain, you have record storms, you have record heat, you have record cold. So we have California who uh, suffered the, uh, went through the coldest summer in their history. You have Moscow who went through the hottest summer in their history. And so you're having extremes everywhere. Up to half a dozen people walked over to John Paul Jackson after the meeting and they said, we didn't see any lights. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, John Paul, last time I had you on the show, you had an end time revelation. And I'm reminded of the angel coming to your mother. Right. What did this angel tell your mother? That she was going to become pregnant after having a miscarriage and that she was going to have a son, that he would have an 11th hour ministry, and that even her pregnancy would be a sign of that 11th hour ministry. And what does 11th hour ministry mean to you? An end time ministry, a ministry that says the Messiah is coming and uh, prepare yourselves. He had a 10 year window. What's going to happen over the next 10 years? And some of the things have already started, uh, such as uh, it, it had to do with weather, with politics, mm -hmm. with wars, with the economy, right. uh, in, in weather. What's happened? Well, take a look at the geophysical issues. There's been three major earthquakes in the world just 